That's right. Time for your weekly recap, baby. You knew you were waiting for it. Uh, and we actually had a red week, believe it or not. A red week in the market. Down 2.65 on the Dow for the week. Which leaves us year-to-date at 17% down. Um, all things considered, not that awful. But uh, down 2.65 uh, this week for the Dow. So let's look at the SP 500. Uh, we're going to do this obviously, then do a little recap of the portfolios, um, and then get into some news. Why don't we? So, um, SP 500, that's right, the first red week in a while. Uh, down 2.26 for the SP 500. Year to date, only down 11.36. Uh, <clears throat> not bad, all things considered. Um, Really just overall bad, you know, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, really, really hurt you pretty bad as far as the downward movement. The NASDAQ even was down on the week, down 1.17. Year to date, still a positive 0.47 up, though. So definitely not off all things considered, uh, but down on the week. So if we look at my portfolios, first we'll get into the Robinhood portfolio. This week I was down 3.15. Um, so last week I outperformed the market by a good percentage point. This week, I underperformed by a good percentage point. So, um, it's just kind of the give or take that you see. So, uh, as far as any updates, I was pretty active in trading this week. Obviously, because I had my wisdom teeth taken out, I had a lot more time at home. Uh, Typically, I'll be at work 60 hours a week or something, but I had those 60 hours pretty well free. I mean, debatable. I guess I had four days off instead of a normal uh, one or two days off. So, I had time. Um, so I did some trading. Obviously, there are some definitely some dividends to show. For some reason, my history is not pulling up, so it won't show easily. Uh, but Apple, I paid a dividend out. I got some shares of Apple from that dividend. Um, what else did we purchase this week? Well, we'll get into that for sure. Um, as we scroll down, first off, Stitchfix has been rocking it for me, by the way. So I'm very glad I picked that one up when I did. Uh, definitely enjoying that. Um, let's see, what did we pick up? What did we pick up? I know we picked up something. Um, Activision Blizzard, I know paid a dividend. I don't remember if it was this week or not, but, uh, it might be. Uh, Iron Mountain, we picked up two shares at, uh, somewhere around the $22 range. Um, so, uh, pretty nice on that aspect. Good to see from that. Um, PSEC, uh, didn't pick up any shares of PSEC, I don't think. I think the dividend paid out on PSEC, though. Um, I believe it did, which gave me 0.37 shares. I think it did. Maybe I've lost my mind. I may have lost my mind. Um, but uh, as far as InBev is concerned, uh, uh, New Age Beverages, I bought 30 shares of New Age Beverages, which you might notice brought me up to a nice 100. I bought them at around 150 shares. So. Uh, it's a company I think will be decent if we're talking about a year out from now. I'll be pretty happy with this position, I think. Um, other than that, no real major changes. I just wish my history would pull up so I remember. There's a, a lot of dividends being paid out this week. I know that. Um, I think KBWY, KBWD might have paid out one. DIV, I know, paid out one. Um, so definitely nice dividends here. Hopefully that history will pull up next week and we can we can take a look at that aspect because it's easier to see what I, what I purchased. But M1 Finance, I put in... A couple hundred bucks this week instead of 200 because we had some down days. Um, so on the week, actually, I was down 3% on this one. Um, market gain down $292. Not exciting for the week, down 3%, but uh, not bad, all things considered. Obviously, we just added a pretty well everything. A little bit more to the dividend portfolio, uh, dividend portion of this uh, portfolio which was down a solid 5% this week, where other things were, were rocking pretty well. I mean, NVIDIA up 8% this week. Very nice to see that. So NVIDIA, very happy to have NVIDIA uh, in this portfolio. Up 200% is what it's saying there, but that's a money-weighted thing. But actually nearly doubled my position on it already. So NVIDIA has been rocking it, um, <clears throat> no doubt. So overall, 8.6% as far as all-time. For Robinhood, you will see I am up uh, 5.2%, and that's since 2017 of July. So we'll take that. Let's get into the news here. <clears throat> we had a freaking casualty. <sighs> JCPenney. 
confirms it's filed for bankruptcy. Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Um, 70 percent. Uh, let's see. With lenders holding approximately 70 percent of J.C. Penney's, the plan will cut billions from the company's indebtedness, uh, and the company continues to bring customers back to stores as they slowly reopen around the country. Um, <coughs> So it notes prior to the pandemic, it met or exceeded its five financial objectives in 2019 with comp sales improvement. So it really kind of sucks how much that, that hurts this company like this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Company's going to be losing a lot. They'll obviously exist after this, but they're going to be selling off a lot of their stores, just so you know. Um, so see if those JC Penney stores are gets to get turned into other buildings potentially. Plenty of Ulta Beauties being built. Mattress firms, because mattress firms are money laundering schemes. Uh, there's plenty of them. Yeah. We saw Amazon is considering buying AMC. Uh, they want to get into the direct movie business. More of a, an in-person brick and mortar type movie business. Uh, but AMC is on the verge of bankruptcy. Um, so really they're trying to get a cheap deal on this so they can kind of get involved in that. And they have a big market, AMC does, so... Uh, Amazon could be a decent buy for them. Um, you got Tesla uh, getting approval to reopen um, in Fremont as far as as long as they adopt extra recommendations. Again, regardless of what happens, Elon's not really going to care um, about that. He's going to keep the thing open, and they're not going to arrest him for it. Obviously, they just they're not going to arrest Elon Musk. Uh, they'll keep doing what they're doing. It's Tesla for the most part. Um, as we see here from this Wisconsin Supreme Court overturned the stay-at-home orders that were extended um, with a 4-3 to three vote. I think this is going to become a lot more common here as people are going to be suing their uh, their state governments for what some might find as unconstitutional uh, stay-at-home orders. Uh, obviously, there are restrictions to this. But there is a, a, it's ridiculous. The extension of a lot of these state homes makes no sense at all. Uh, when the vast majority is going to be condensed in really five, six cities in the country, um, we're still going to be ending up shutting down the entire country. Like, at some point, it doesn't make sense. There's people who have to get back to work because we are destroying the economy. Um, and that's what really this, these people in Wisconsin were about. Um, Wisconsin wasn't even a place that was hardly hit. I mean, they were barely hit by this, and they got an extended stay-at-home orders. A lot of it, I mean, regardless of politics, governors on both sides, I think they kind of got an interest in, you know, feeling a little bit important, a little bit too important, because their say was so important. And I think they tried to take that power, and a lot of people abused it. So, I just, you know, it's ridiculous. Um, and, and I'm glad that this got overturned, and I think you might see a decent trend of this happening uh, nationwide coming up. It just depends on those state Supreme Courts, obviously. Um, we had yet again another bad jobs report in which we had another <coughs> 2.9 million jobless claims. Not looking good, um, but that was last week's jobless claims. Not good. Uh, the jobless claims just keep racking up. That was against a 2.5 billion consensus or 2.5 million consensus. We did, though, have some positive news. Uh, we have a little bit of a potential secondary trade war happening um, here with China again as the, the, the fuel has been reignited. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor, though, has confirmed it's going to build a $12 billion plant in Arizona uh, to build their chips to get their supply chain away from China. That is pretty darn massive, especially for the United States. That's just big. Um... And I think you'll see a lot of companies kind of try to wean a little bit more off China. I don't think we've been hard enough on China at all. I mean, through his through history, we haven't been hard enough on China. And I think now, hopefully, we take action and we start to see more companies do stuff like this. And that's really the point of these tariffs um, and this trade war is to kind of try to get people out of China. If the companies would have listened a little bit earlier um, and maybe this pandemic didn't happen, we would have already been a lot further through on this process and a lot more companies probably would have already announced they're pulling some of their business out of China. Apple's announced they're pulling around 40% of their AirPod production out of China. I mean, there's going to be a lot of companies just trying to reduce uh, their foothold in China, Chinese manufacturing, which is it's good to see. Uh, but as far as this trade war is concerned, we had uh, the U.S. 
pretty much banning um, <clears throat> banning Huawei, which doesn't shock me at all. Banning Huawei chips for for a good reason. Um, chip stocks got hit pretty hard because of this, and and again, it's just because of everything going on with with China. It's it's more of a safety precaution that. They're not wanting any sort of potential spying, whatever it might be. But uh, chip stocks got hit pretty hard because of Huawei. Do it because of this happening to Huawei. Because there's a decent chance China retaliates on the U.S. Um, retail sales report came in and it was not great. 16.2 percent um, plummet uh, in April. That's definitely not good. Um, at 16 percent year over year. Um, 16% off year over year in April, uh, but there's reports obviously that uh, May looks good, and it was a significant improvement from March. Uh, but you see stores like electronic stores down big, clothing stores obviously all considered non-essentials down massively, furniture down massively, uh, non-store retailers so online business saw an 8.4% month over month increase, uh, grocery stores. Sales fell 13.2% uh, in March from uh, as March consumer stockpiling cooled off a little bit. Not all places saw that decrease, but definitely plenty of places saw some growth. Building materials and garden equipment saw a 0.4% year over year growth. Pretty nice on that aspect. Yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't an awful one, but they're expecting bigger numbers in, in May here. Um, you have Sorrento Therapeutics here shot up massively, saying that they have discovered an antibody uh, that can provide 100% inhibition of the uh, virus and flush out the uh, virus from the body within four days. Um, there is a cure, is what they're trying to say. And again, I mean, that's exciting news. Is it based in anything, really? Um, one of the one of hundreds it screened blocks spike proteins um, from attaching to AC2, a receptor on the surface of healthy cells that serves as a doorknob to open the cell to infection. So it'll pretty much block the virus from actually being able to infect you. Pretty interesting. Uh, and then we finish up today positive as we talk about um, potential uh, potential vaccines. So, uh, unveiled efforts aimed at accelerating the discovery of a vaccine, overcoming monthly data showing uh, recent breaking decline in U.S. retail sales. But uh, pretty much he's saying we're going to do whatever we can to aid the companies trying to create vaccines. That includes Johnson & Johnson, and there's a couple other players in the business. But they're going to do whatever they can to support those people to actually get this vaccine created. Um, because that's the only way we really return to quote-unquote normalcy. I mean, it's hard to say. I don't know. I mean, this is something that's going to be around with us for a while. That's the whole point of flattening the curve for us, is this is going to extend out quite a bit. I just hope that we can return to some state of normalcy before we find a vaccine. I don't know if, if it'll be possible. And we have people calling for schools to be closed the entire year, which is ridiculous, by the way, um, as a res preventative measure. So, um, Hopefully that's not the case, but we don't know. This economy is going to get hammered if we keep staying closed. And it already has been hammered pretty hard, but you can't just print money infinitely. This new stimulus package idea is horrible. Um, some people might need it, but again, it's just extending the unemployment benefits. Awful idea. Another $1,200 check sent out. Awful idea. Printing money like that. It's, just, it's going to hurt us uh, long-term investors, you know. It's going to hurt us in the short term. But we have a long-term outlook, so it'll be all right, guys. All right, thank you.